And today on the Engage Your Passion podcast, we are talking about how to start your personal brand. The very first tips on where to start, where to begin, and how to get started no matter if you've been an artist for a long time or you're just getting started in high school. Well, with that, let's get it started. Hello and welcome back. Hello and welcome back. Hello and welcome back to the Engage Your Passion podcast. This is the career. Up and down is the career. Rejection is the career. So reject me, please. Yeah. Because it's You're going to get me to where I am supposed to be. It's time to engage your passion. Welcome back to the Engage Your Passion podcast, or we like to say the EYP podcast. My name is Tony. I'm Sarah. And together we are Tony Tony and Sarah. Sarah. Well, welcome back, everyone. We're excited to have you guys here. Um, Just wanted to kind of do a shout out to some of the listeners and people who've been commenting and um, giving us some praise and some um, constructive criticism. And Mm -hmm. so I will say thank you for all of that. We appreciate all of that. And um, we intend to uh, hopefully bring you more uh, information and um, insights to you know, building your brand. Yeah, yeah and uh, I think in a couple of weeks, uh, we're gonna do a Q and A. So now is the best time to get us your questions so that we can um, start answering them. Yeah, a lot of good ones have come in so far. Yeah, so. I'm like, there's a couple I'm ready, I'm excited to dig in. Yeah, some hard ones too, so. Yeah. That one we may have to kind of go, in our opinion. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is, is in, in our, our opinion. opinion. <laughs> so, well today on the show, we are talking about Branding, personal branding, the importance of it and how to get started. Um, One of the things um, we get asked a lot is, oh, what is, what do you mean? Um, And so one of the things we have found, many of the people that we work with are clients, students, directors, um, even parents. What do you mean by a brand? That's, you know, something you go buy, like Coca-Cola or a Goonie bag or, you know, Gucci. Goonie. Goonie. Oh my gosh. Um, Isn't that a, a movie? Dooney. Isn't that Dooney? I was thinking Do- Dooney and Burke. Is that what it is? Uh-huh. Okay. But that type of brand. Um, and basically transitioning from an artist to a brand um, is a little bit of insight. But once you get there, it just kind of expands. And we're going to talk about just kind of how to evaluate yourself and kind of take the first steps towards getting yourself into transitioning into a brand. Yeah, if you've been here for a while, you've probably heard us talking a lot about it because it's basically what we um, strive to do is take artists and turn them into a brand. But um, today, I think we're going to get a little bit more specific on like the very first place we need first to step, start. start. Yeah. Um, because and because that is usually once we can get people there, then understanding the concept of branding yourself, no matter. Um, where you are in the process, whether you're already an artist performing mm-hmm. um, and just trying to take yourself to the next level, or you're starting out the at like you just graduated high school, or um, even in high school and you're ready to get going. Um, these, this is like where everyone can start. Right. So. Okay. So with that, want to get started? Sure. Okay. So first part, um, or the first part uh, that you should consider um, is truly where are you in your journey? Um, And when it comes to the branding, um, where you are is kind of, you know, the starting point because everyone, you know, has a little bit of pieces here, a little bit of pieces there. Um, But so for instance, let's just use the branding technique or the branding assets that we talk about. So, um, that starts simply. Are you on social media? But not only on social media, but are do you have a business account on social media? So it's one thing to have a personal account, but the business account is what's going to get you in front of the people and the decision makers that are going to help you get to where you want to go. The personal account's great for fun and all those crazy pics and you know the fish lips and all that. But when it gets past that, do you have business accounts? Um, the second thing would be, do you have a website? Um, you know. Sorry, you said fish lips. Yeah, people do those fish lips and go. <laughs> I know. Well, but to be clear, you can do fish lips on a business account. The business account on social just allows you to do 
a whole lot more than you can just do right. on um, and makes you more vis visible. And when you hit a certain aspect, you can add certain things like adding links to your website or um, swipe the swipe up feature or you right. get to be verified and right. stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, the personal is great, but it for what you want to do on as far as getting yourself out there, it's not going to be the same. Right. So, and I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no worries. And nothing against fish lips, <laughs> by the way. If that's part of your personal so, brand, hey, use it. Use it. <laughs> use it. Um, so, with that, so, and then, like she said, um, you know, going to the, you know, being able to link to a website, do you have one? Um, these days, you know, a lot of the younger people, I'll just say, are, well, I've, they've got my Facebook. Well, the people who are going to, for the most part, now this is not the same all the way across, and people will find you on Instagram, and people can find you on Facebook still, um, and not, not, but not a lot of people have a Facebook. Not a lot of younger people have the Facebook. Well, I will say this, um, if you do not have a Facebook account, it's going to be, you know, for the larger organizations, sponsors, brands to find you. That's just one more aspect that they can find you on. Um, and it just broadens your reach. So um, and then also, depending on your brand, um, uh, young people on LinkedIn, uh, it just depends on what your brand is. If you're a creative, if you're a performer, um, just depends. But those things do make a difference um, in regards to um, how to kind of find out where you are, where you're starting with your assets. So one is social media and then websites. So when you say um, figure out where you are, mm -hmm. you mean as a brand, not as, as brand. an artist. Right. Not yeah. as an artist. Many, many yeah, that's very true. I'm glad you made that, made that point. Um, as an artist, you know, I want to be a dancer, singer, actor, director, photography, DP, editor. Um, those are still the training aspects um, and the performing and the skills aspects mm -hmm. of your craft. But um, your craft is different than your, well, the different aspect from your craft than for your brand. Um, and so with that, I'm saying, where are you with your brand? So um, also, you know, just media assets. Do you have professional headshots? And when I say professional, it doesn't have to be a studio where you pay $900 for a session, but is it dare I say, unless it's your brand, unless you're a comedian or, or beauty, uh, beauty, uh, beauty influencer or something like that, do you have a professional headshot? Um, and it can still be in your, in, in the like of your brand, but do you have those? Um, one thing I do tell uh, our clients um, uh, that you should be able to reach out to those assets and deliver them to anybody who asks within five minutes. If you're walking down the street, oh my gosh, and you're discovered by, you know, that doesn't necessarily happen as much as anymore, but, and you're discovered by some model, modeling agent, oh my gosh, you have a headshot? Sure. Boom. Um, because you have their attention. And these days, attention is key. So yeah. um, I always say the rule of thumb is from social media to websites, to headshots, to resumes, to bios, um, to a demo reel, to self tapes, all those should be available. Um, in some location, and you should be able to deliver all of that to, um, uh, you know, a decision maker or, or someone who's requesting that within five minutes. And because that just shows that you're already prepared and that you're ready to go. So what they say, um, you know, um, luck favors the prepared. So. Yeah. I think there's also um, a form of evaluation as your brand outside of social media or the assets you need. Mm -hmm. Who are the people you know? You need, where's your, evaluate your relationships. We've talked about that a ton here mm -hmm. um, because it, that's why people buy brands because they have a, some sort of tie and relationship or emotional attachment to that and that is part of your brand. So who are the people who call you all the time to um, uh, to deliver the skills that you have mm -hmm. and because those are the networking things that you are going to need when putting that so having that evaluation doesn't mean you need to contact them right now but having that like who are the those people that you already kind of have in your back pocket right and it, in, and there's different i guess rings of influence or things yeah. of that nature and really just start with your family and friends who 
you know, who are your family and friends and, and have that list there. Um, and I think um, one of the things, because, uh, you know, not really today's topic, but networking and having that um, networking ability and starting with your families and family and friends, which in turn will turn into your community. Right. Um, but I don't want to digress because they're kind of going that. So I guess where you are with um, your media assets, and I'll just review just in case. So social media, website, um, professional headshots, um, if you're modeling or beauty, then you probably want, um, uh, you know, um, a lookbook of some sort, um, a demo reel, uh, you know, self tapes for, for performers, um, uh, all of that sort of uh, digital media assets, what we call digital proof that you can basically deliver to someone within five minutes. So, uh, and that's the goal. And then with, you know, how to get that information and where to put it, we can give, you know, we can put some notes in, um, um, we can put some notes um, later or come out, to, come out to the site and we can kind of show you there. Mm -hmm. But that is one of the things kind of, where are you? And then start working on trying to build those media assets. So that's one. Yeah. Two. Um, number two is where do you want to go? So um, you'll you'll see this is all about basically traveling. <laughs> <laughs> um, where are you? And then where do you want to go? And um, I think that we're going to talk about this in our third topic, but um, make it measurable, right? Mm -hmm. um, if I want to, if I say I want to lose weight. And I lost weight, but it wasn't what I, you know, I lost five pounds. Well, and I said, I, and I meant I want to lose 10, but I, all my goal was I want to lose weight. I did lose weight, right? So if I, but if I say I want to lose 10 pounds and I only lost five, then I know I haven't hit my goal yet. Right. So and that's, it, that's the easiest way I can. Yeah. It. And that's kind of mixing the both, both of them yeah, together. Sorry. Yeah. Oh no, no, nothing wrong with that. I feel, um, that. You know, getting just goal setting in itself is a mm -hmm. full podcast. Yes. <laughs> um, actually, it's probably a full series because the goal right. setting of saying, okay, let's make it simple. I'm hungry. Okay, you're hungry. And so that's kind of maybe kind of giving a metaphor or everything. It's like, I'm hungry. And um, that's kind of where you are. Am I really hungry? Am I starving? Do I just need a snack? What, what? what level are you at with your hunger? Mm -hmm. Two, then where are you going to go? Am I going to get fast food? Are we going to sit down and um, for a restaurant? Are we going to do, um, you know, for, well, I was going to say, I was going to say drinks, but maybe not for the kids, maybe for the directors and the parents. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, are you going for some adult beverages or some, what type of, what a is going shake. to do that? A milkshake. There we go. <laughs> uh, let's bring that back. Um, and so, but what type of goal are you looking for? What is going to basically, uh, you know, uh, take care of that hunger? And I guess as an artist, is it, okay, I want to be, you know, say in your high school, I want to be the lead in my high school play. Or I want to be uh, cast in my local, uh, what do you call it, uh, community theater uh, event that's coming up. I want to do a demo tape. I want to finish my demo reel. What is that goal? Um, and kind of let you, kind of helps you define where to go. Just like, hey, am I just going to get some fast food or are we going to sit down to a fine dining? Mm -hmm. It's like, where are you? What do you want to go? So I have a question. Um, just as you were talking, it came up. In my mind, mm -hmm. um, when I hear you talk about like setting a goal, do you want to get the lead in your community's play? Mm -hmm. Let's just say that. How is that different than an artist's goal? Like, because um, as far as a branding goal versus a this is what I want to do, because I think that's why. Um, just in talking to people, I think that's where people crock, you know, are mm -hmm. blurred because, um, and I'll let you kind of speak on it. But for me, it's like, well, when I grew up, you know, I wanted to be a professional dancer. Do you want to do ballet? Or you want to do Broadway or whatever? You set that goal. And that is my goal as an artist. So how do I go about setting a goal for branding myself um, to hit my goal as an artist? Right. Perfect. Perfect, perfect question. Um, so let's just use you as um, as a professional, uh, wanting to be a professional ballet dancer. Okay. So you make the decision that, hey, I'm going to be a professional ballet dancer. And at this point, what are my next steps? Mm -hmm. So 
I always start with what are the artist goals because that can that helps determine the branding goals. Um, so they are different. So for you wanting to be a ballerina or a professional ballerina, now we know, okay, to do that skill-wise, you are looking at um, getting into a ballet academy. You are mm -hmm. looking at um, you know, certain, a different type of training than if you wanted to be a hip-hop dancer. May, um, even maybe even geographically it's different maybe now okay instead of going out to LA to be a ballet dancer not that they're not ballet dancers out in LA but maybe now I'm going to think of um, maybe I think of think of um, New York or Paris or depending on what type of dance you want to what kind of a company you want to be a contemporary ballet or right. traditional ballet and then from there it's then creating the media assets and the branding to attract those decision makers. So let's say you want to be an ABT. So with ABT, as you and I both know, there at, at, at one point in the past, I don't know exactly what it is now, mm -hmm. but there was a certain look, there was a certain style um, they were looking for. And so if you know that they're, you know, that you're going to have to learn Vaganova and you're going to have to know Balanchine, well, then you now can take that course or take those trainings, but then in your branding and in your presentation, you can make sure that there's a demo of you doing one of the ballets from, uh, you know, uh, from Balanchine or learning the, tr the actual skills and training from uh, Vaganova. So it's just that is kind of going to help determine what your branding is, which is why I say, where do you want to go? Is that is that clear or is that kind of um, messy? Yeah, I, I think it's clear, first of all. Vaganova and Balanchine are ballet techniques right. for all of our non-ballet right. people. Yeah. Right. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah. Um, They're ballet techniques. So yeah. when we talk about these steps, um, and we never had this conversation because I think we had different interpretations of where do you want to go? Mm -hmm. Do When we say where do you want to go, are you meaning as an artist or do you mean as a brand? Um, I initially, for most of the people, I would say in high school, mm -hmm. it's where you want to go as an artist, and because okay. most, and this is which is my experience, most people don't realize that they even need to be a brand. Need to be a brand. Um, from the college and established artists from there, then it's okay. Brand wise, you know, what type of uh, branding reputation do you want? What type of influence do you want to be able to bring to attract? sponsors and backers and uh, partnerships and stuff like that. So for me, with people who are still, I guess, in educational theater in high school and college, it's what you want to do as an artist, which will help determine the brand. Whereas you are out of that educational aspect, then it's what are my branding goals? And you have at, mostly because you have a better understanding of what's going on, and then you have a under, better understanding of what's capable. So um, we have clients who you know have partnered with Apple. Um, you know we have uh, with Apple and uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the other. Um, with you know different products and services um, where they go on their website um, or their Instagram or something like that and they're basically modeling shoes from you know from Australian outfitters or something mm -hmm. like that and so being able to know that hey well I want to be in design well then let's make sure that you are pushing out you know digital proof of your designs so then when a company sees your designs and says hey I like your style and I like the people who like your style I'd love to partner with you Mm -hmm. Here's some compensation, even if it's financially or whatever, to be able to go to the next step. Did I was that was that clear? Did I kind of did I answer the question? I don't know. Hope so. Yeah, I mean, I think that. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get my words uh, right. I think based on what I'm hearing you say is. Where do you want to go kind of as an artist or what do why do you want to become a personal brand? And and you've evaluated where you're at, and then what do you want to get out of becoming a personal brand? And that's kind of where do you want to go? Yeah, and um, and sometimes, well, the question I ask, I ask this: is what is your vision of success? And I ask that even on our media side with our media clients on the agency side mm -hmm. versus what we do with personal branding. What is your vision of success? Because some people may say, well, I want to be famous. And we've had a couple people say that. Mm -hmm. And we go, okay, but well, what does famous mean to you? Um, famous may be, you know, I want 
300,000 people follow me on Instagram. Another person's vision is to say, oh, 300,000? I need a million too. Easy. Or, um, you know, I need to be making a certain amount of money from my influencer. Or I just want to basically affect, you know, I want to make sure that I'm working with, you know, people um, that I feel can use my help, you know, at least 15 times a year. It's just everyone's vision of success is different. Mm -hmm. And that's why in some ways it's so fun what we do I mean it's like we get to engage our passion is because it's the same it's not necessarily the same well it's the same principles right but the but each situation is so unique right. that it keeps it one it keeps it interesting but the principles remain the same yeah we we've talked about this a lot but like people's definition of the same thing is completely different especially different perspectives too. yeah mm -hmm. um so that's that does make our job fun you know understanding what people want out of life and out of their success and their passion right. so but i think i think when you explain it that way define your vision of success um because i think that will help determine the direction you're going absolutely it'll it'll and then it kind of leads right into what you were talking about mm -hmm. um perfect part three which is quantify that goal um because because uh, how we have it here written is well how do you know you get there um i've had uh clients who based on our initial conversations we we hit those goals and they'll say oh, well i wish i could get more it's like well there's nothing wrong with more but just don't forget where you came from, where you started, look where you are, and then basically, I guess, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Acknowledge where you are, and then you start, excuse me, start the process again. It's don't forget about your little wins, like yeah. the little wins along the way. Um, one of the things I ask every one of my clients, and every time we do, um, my clients, our clients, every time we, um, Every time we talk with them on a, especially on the one-on-one, -on -one, but even the coaching and all that, it's what were your successes? What did you accomplish? And it's amazing how people um, often, well, I've got one, I've got two, I've got three. And then you start asking them questions and it turns into 15, yeah. 20, because a lot of people don't take, they don't, I wouldn't say they don't appreciate it, but they don't look at, hey, I was able to get this, 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 this done this week. That's success. That's the fact that you got your list ticked off. That yeah. take your little win. Goes back to being the gratitude stuff that mm -hmm. we've talked about right, in the past. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I think defining that when you create your vision of success, um, that's kind of why I started there is it's so important. So many people will create a goal, like I said, very broad of, I want to lose weight. But if you don't define that, you will never know if you ever hit it. Right. So it's a little um, vague, right? Yeah. So you have to quantify that. And then I would also say you have to give yourself realistic time frame. Hmm. Um, so many people want the quick win. Um, and if you're going to want a quick win, then you need to make smaller bite-sized goals. That way you feel like you're accomplishing. Because like Tony said, you have to uh, acknowledge your successes. But if, you're, if you need to create this big audacious goal and you need to hit it so Next fast. Next week. Yeah, yeah. Then you're going you're gonna to be uh, disappointed. Kind of, you kind of set yourself up for failure when you do mm -hmm. that, and that, and that's a great thing because I had, I will, I personally had, um, uh, sorry, just <laughs> sorry, sorry, AJ. AJ. <laughs> um, but I personally had that challenge when I started. Yeah. I wanted everything yesterday, and I had to learn the hard way. But um, but you know, I learned. Um, but at the same time, it, it is the expectation of of just people in general. You want you want it all, and you want it now. Yeah. You know, and um, and I think just being able to understand that, especially with with a culture that what they call it the microwave culture that we're in now, you know, some things just taste better when you bake it. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> it just you yeah. know it just um, it, you know it, there's a little bit of the, the quality and the time into it. 
Um, I think I, I would say too, I've seen it when people take the time to do it right, the they're more appreciative of where they get. And but don't you think it lasts longer too? I think so. Yeah. I mean, of my experience, the people who've taken the time because there's a I guess do I say the roots you put down if you put down those strong roots and it takes a little time for the roots to get in there but once they're there um you know strong winds hurricanes all that stuff bad situations come along but you're solid where if right. you're just trying to do it shallow i mean all these metaphors but i'm um, <laughs> trying to do but if you're trying to do it shallow you just get blown away i yeah. mean by the wind my um my my dear grandma always said, you know, you've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Yeah. Um, and you've got to have, you have to know what you're going to stand for. You have to know what you want and plant those roots. And if you do. Sorry, AJ, he there. keeps banging on the table. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so you want to recap or did yeah. you want to go? I think, okay. I think that's good for, you know, I think. Just getting where people... we where to start. Right. I mean, that's we could sit here and tell you all the things, but you'd be here for days. And I think, you know, just some homework is to do a quick evaluation on yourself. And just so you know, this cycle just keeps repeating. Once you quantify your uh, goal and you know where you like, if you've gotten there or not, then all you do is do it again and you reevaluate and it is something that just never ending yeah it's i mean because most people once you get a goal okay what's next yeah and so and what will happen as you go on your journey it, you'll just your perspective will expand your ideas will expand then i mean it's great um i think my one of my favorite things are when people um come back and go i would have I never would have thought i would have gotten here yeah. um we just had one of our clients kind of do that they got booked on a really big um project and the comment was i just would have never thought i yeah. just would have never thought and that's where kind of the payback is like it's pretty cool yeah it's pretty cool yes um so just a quick um recap start with an evaluation with yourself that's the top tip for branding personal branding um and figure out where you currently are yeah wh where you are um, you know, just kind of, you know, where, where your, where your starting place is, what, you know, where are you right now? And then it allows you to kind of give a vision of where you want to go. Yeah. Um, the second is where do you want to go? <laughs> Sorry, stole some thunder. <laughs> um, where do you want to go? And, um, just to lead it into our, the third one is really make sure it, I use quantify. I like to say measurable. Can you measure it? Like it has to, you have to give it a measurable place. That way then you can know, did you make it? Yeah. Or at least can make that step. And then a way, and maybe another way to ask is, is also what is your vision of that Absolutely. success? Yep. Um, you know, what needs to actually happen to be famous? What actually needs to happen to start your new makeup line or your eyelash brand? Yep. What, what I need to sell a hundred? Well, start there. I need to sell a hundred units. Okay, well, start there. And then once you do sell a hundred units, you celebrate and then you get right back to it. Yeah. yeah. And dare I say, be careful when you make your goal of it being an emotional one correct um good point most people are not uh they think if i have a million dollars in the bank then i will be happy be happy well first of all no <laughs> right, that's not i mean ask anyone that has a million dollars in the bank that started from nothing they the money is not what they wanted it's probably what the money could Offer, get, them. offer them and whether it's freedom or a certain type of lifestyle or whatever that's your goal that because you might be able to hit that goal with less money in the bank so exactly. i would really dig deeper than um a million dollars being would make me feel happy, happy. Yeah. what what do you really want um so yeah and it's right because and then an emotional part the thing that we stray to do that is because the emotions are fleeting. Yeah. It's like you'll feel this one day, one that that day, but um, but if you want financial freedom, 
then okay, what does that mean to you or to your family or to or whoever you're you know that you are uh, considering that for? Yeah. Um, and I, I think those are just good tips to kind of at least start because that was a thing we have you know we've talked about a lot, but some people just want to know how to start, which is why we did that. Yeah, today. I think yeah. maybe we can um, we can write it down goal setting for artists. Yeah. I think that that might be, I mean, just goal setting in general, but I think that might be something that we can talk more on and kind of. Yeah, I'm making, they can always take the, the we have course. a course, brand, Branding Essentials, where you can go on, you can take it. And the good thing is um, we, we tried to keep it um, as accessible to everyone. You can take it as a one-on-one -on -one course with one of our facilitators, or you can take it as a group. Um, um, and uh, we kind of limit that so everybody kind of gets their thing. Or you can take it on your own, just going online and signing up for the for the course and do it on your own pace and your own timing. Um, but that course is called Branding Essentials. And the first part of that is, you know, where are you in starting and, and this kind of information. So there's different ways, but I think... Is that available now or when is that coming? Available? It's available on the site. So they can it go... Is yeah, to purchase? Can, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So awesome. branding essentials, but, um, you know, not trying to do a pitch, but we just wanted to kind of get that information. And if you want to take it further, um, and then I guess this is the pitch that we are doing, um, something in the brand new year, um, and it's branding essentials course. And it's, um, you know, uh, a couple weeks online, and then we do an in-person, um, evaluation at the end and it's something to kind of get people ready for pre-screens for if they're going for college it's also a way if you're auditioning for um, the new projects tv and film projects that are coming out how to make sure that you are building your brand to the best so that they find you to be a value and it's something we um, we did it as a longer course when everything was going on but it was a lot of um, in-person stuff so mm -hmm. we've kind of made it a bit of a hybrid so that more people can enjoy it Cool. Yeah, check that out on the website and on social for more details. Sure. And so um, I think that's great. So please, um, if you guys can go to Engage Your Passion podcast, leave comments, like. Um, review. Review. Um, you can also visit us um, on the website, Industry Access. That's AXS.com. Um, and if you want to see everything that we do, you can go to AdamsDavy.com. Um, and I think for us, is you know, the biggest thing for us is this being able to engage our passion and then being able to have people join us to do it because there's nothing better than that. Um, at least in my, in my life, um, we get to, we've been doing it for years now and I wouldn't change it for the world. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty amazing. Awesome. So <laughs> that is my cue to say, um, we appreciate you guys watching. We'll hopefully see you soon. My name's Tony. I'm Sarah. And until then, engage your passion. Engage your passion. <laughs>